Which celebrity would you like to get photographed with? Just say it. The PM. Yo, let's talk about Gen Z, the lit generation that's flipping the script in the political world. In this video, I'll tell you how Generation Z is reshaping everything from the way they speak to the leaders they elect. And while I'm at it, I've tried to keep my language as Gen Z as my creaky old millennial self would allow. I'm Anisha Rikari, and you are watching First Things Fast. Take out your phone, take out your phone. Meet Jordan Bardella from France. Euh, Aujourd'hui, nous réalisons dans le cadre d'une élection européenne euh, un score historique, inédit, sans appel. Bardella is just 28. He's far right, and he may well become the Prime Minister of France very soon. I will tell you more about that in just a bit. Now, born between the late 1990s and early 2010s, Bardella, for instance, was born in 1995. The Gen Z squad is all about shaking things up and making sure their voices are heard. Um... From climate strikes to social justice movements, this generation is not afraid to flex their activism muscles. This young American activist is a good example of that. Oh my goodness. In less than one week, you all have sent over 100,000 emails to universities across the country demanding divestment from companies that are complicit in genocide, a climate crisis, mass incarceration, and more. Let's get one thing straight. Gen Z is woke. They're not just passively sipping tea and watching the world go by. Nah, they're out there in the trenches, slaying the game and pushing for real change. Some are helping veteran politicians get popular on TikTok. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. I recently joined RFK Jr. as a senior advisor on his campaigns. A first up, while Gen Z may be all about no cap, telling it like it is and calling out BS when they see it, in India it is a bit different. While the world often sees young voters as a force for change, India's youth vote, and we are going by the post-general election CSDS data to come to this conclusion, uh, the CSDS data doesn't show the youth vote dramatically shifting away from the establishment, uh, that is the BJP. The BJP, India's ruling party, saw a slight drop of 1 to 2 percentage points among voters under 35 in recent elections. This is apparently significant because in 2019, the BJP's appeal among the young first-time voters had gone up by a whopping 5 percentage points compared to 2014. However, there's little evidence to suggest that the youth have shifted en masse to the opposition coalition of the India bloc. Meanwhile, across Europe, the story is different. In France, the recent advances of the right wing, propelled partly by a section of the Gen Z in this deeply polarized country, led to protests on the streets. Du, du, bah, du résultat du vote, quoi, clairement. Euh, de voir l'extrême droite qui remonte comme ça en flèche, c'est complètement hallucinant. Ouais. These protests were organized by the French, who are concerned by the rise of the right wing. The right-wing group here, which includes Bardella's National Rally Party, was projected to win 58 seats, a gain of 9 seats in the recently concluded European Parliament elections. In response, French President Emmanuel Macron called a snap election, saying he could not ignore the outcome of the European election in which his pro-Europe Renaissance party performed badly. If the latest polls are anything to go by, the National Rally might be poised to win those two. Yes, some of you might say, hang on, isn't National Rally Marine Le Pen's party? Well, yes, it's just that Le Pen, in order to forego some of the anti-Semitic, racist and other negative baggage associated with her and her dad, is apparently pushing Bardella as the party's face, starting from 2022, when she named Bardella the party's president. According to the New York Times, Bardella, mild-mannered and impeccably dressed, embodies the National Rally's efforts to remake its image. The way he dresses up seems to be a big deal somehow. One French publication once described him as the blonde guy in the blue blazer. And his popularity, not surprising, is often traced back to his popularity among young voters on social media. Don't get me wrong, he also happens to be a fairly polarizing figure, but his political stock is definitely rising. In Germany, the youth's political priorities are shifting. Not long back, the loyalties lay with environmental parties, earning them the nickname Generation Greta. This is all wrong. But recent surveys show that young people are now more worried about inflation, expensive housing, and social divisions than climate change. Hence, support for the far-right Alternative for Germany or Alternative for Deutschland was up 11 percentage points among under-25s, more than double the increase among the broader population. 
So one thing we've established pretty well by now is that Gen Z is influencing politics through the use of social media. Platforms like TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter are their playgrounds. And they know how to use these tools to mobilize and organize. In Spain, there is this social media influencer born in 1990 called Alvis Perez. This news site called him the new ultra star from Spain. Another publisher, Euronews, called him a political rabble rouser. In 2024, this political rabble rouser opened a political party called Se Acabola Fiesta. You know what it means? In English, the party's name translates to the party's over. As the Gen Z like to say, LOL. I would love to vote for a party that's called the party has started in India someday. But no, so, so Alvis Perez then collected 15,000 signatures needed to run in the European elections in just two weeks. He did it by mobilizing lakhs of followers he had accumulated on his Telegram and Instagram channels where he shares controversial videos criticizing corruption and institutional and moral deterioration he believes Spain and Europe are suffering. You know what he did in the election then? He won not one, but three of the 61 seats Spain gets in the European Parliament. Another very interesting example of influencers making political inroads in Europe is YouTuber slash TikToker Fidias Panio 2. I will try to teach you how the European Union make decisions. Whoa, sorry my phone fell. The 24-year-old with no political experience and no formal higher education, according to the AP News Service, rode the wave of his online popularity all the way to one of six seats allotted to Cyprus in the European Parliament. I really believe there are more fun and simple ways to communicate politics and let's discover this together. Fidias' campaign took no political positions apparently, made no promises and did not even present a program for his time in office. It seems now that people are hungry not for political positions but for true people that are not lying but saying the truth, he told the Associated Press. In the US, Gen Z was poised to be a game changer in the 2024 presidential elections, with over 40 million Gen Z voters eligible, including 8 million newly eligible since the 2022 midterms. This diverse and politically active generation can significantly impact the outcome. USA Today has gone to the extent of saying that young voters could be one of those voting blocks that decides who gets to be president. In the US, traditionally young voters don't go out to vote as much as their older age counterparts. By this time, many young American voters have really hit the gas, demanding ceasefire in the Israel-Hamas war, for instance. All in all, Gen Z is not just a wave, they are a tsunami. They're bringing a fresh perspective to politics, they're leveraging their digital skills, pushing for policies that matter to them, and redefining political engagement. As more Gen Zers come of age and step into voting booths, their influence is only going to grow. Politicians take note. The future is here and it's lit. If you found this video informative, please like, comment and subscribe for more updates. Thank you for watching. First things first.